Hi, you guys. Welcome back to the program. Uh, my name is Brad. This is the Firefighters Financial Toolbox. Today we're going to talk about the SECURE Act. The SECURE Act stands for Setting Every Community Up for Retirement Enhancement Act. This was passed on December 20th of last year to take effect here in 2020. Uh, we're going to talk about, this is an article I found from Kiplinger. It's 10 ways that the SECURE Act will impact your retirement savings. Now, some of these things people may agree with is good things and some is bad things. And we're going to talk about them as we go along. First thing I want to say is the biggest thing it does is it's moved the RMD starting age from 70 and a half to 72. Now, the RMD age has not been changed since it was implemented back in the early 70s. Uh, we're living longer now, so now you have an extra year and a half before you have to take required minimum distributions. Uh, gives you an extra year and a half. Now, that may sound like a good thing because it gives you another year and a half for it to grow, but what it also does is it means that the RMD that you do take is going to be higher. Now, before, at 70 and a half, there is a, there's a table, and the first multiplier is 27.4. So for easy math, we're going to say it's about 4% of your balance. Now, if you have, let's say, a million dollars in your IRA, that means you would have to take $40,000, whether you needed it or not. Now, I don't know what the, I have not seen the new tables, but I guarantee that if it's moved it back, it's going to shorten the table, which means that your first RMD will be bigger than the than it was previously. Second thing it's done is it's gotten rid of the age restriction on IRA contributions. It used to be that after 70 and a half, even if you were still working, you are not eligible to contribute to a traditional IRA uh, any longer. That restriction has been lifted. So if you're still working, remember you can only make uh, contributions to an IRA from earned income. So if you're working, there'll be no uh, age limit on how old you can be to still be working and contribute to that, uh, much like a Roth IRA already does. What it all, Okay, 401ks for part-time employees. Part-time workers need to save for retirement too. However, many employers don't offer that for people who aren't working full-time hours. It's about to change. Starting in 2021, the new requirement law guarantees 401k plan eligibility for employees who have at least worked 500 hours per year. The part-timer must also be 21 years old by the end of their three-year period. So if somebody, say, started at age 18, if they were 21 by the time the third year, uh, then they could, you know. Now, this rule does not apply to collective bargaining employees. So uh, if you're a union member, they can still deny it. Penalty-free withdrawals for birth or adoption of a child. Congratulations if you have a baby on the way and you're about or you're about to adopt a child. If you have 401k or an IRA or other requirement accounts, the new retirement law lets you take out up to $5,000 following the birth of the adoption of a child and it's exempt from the 10% early withdrawal penalty. So, uh, you could take a little loan out of there and it would not count against you and would not be uh, penalized. Annuity information options expanded. Knowing how much you have in your 401k account is one thing. Knowing how long the money is going to last is another. Currently, 401k plan statements provide an account balance, but it doesn't really tell you how much money you can expect to receive in a month once you do retire. Uh, with this, it's going to help people who are savers who are saving kind of gain a little better understanding of uh what that will translate to in a monthly and if you've noticed a lot of the uh 401k providers are already doing that in their on their websites uh so it could give you a little better idea of how much if you have a balance of let's say a hundred thousand dollars it would give you an idea of how much that would be per month or per year of actual money that you could withdraw. Uh, the new retirement law also makes it easier for 401k plan sponsors to offer annuities and other lifetime income options to their participants. So uh, other than just uh, mutual and index funds 
and maybe bond funds. It may may allow 401ks to actually do annuities within their plans as well. The auto enrollment 401k plans is plans are enhanced. More companies are automatically enrolling eligible employees to their 401ks and workers have to actually opt out if they don't want to. Now, I think this is a good thing, you guys, because here's the thing. If you have to actually go to your HR and opt out of contributing, then you are probably going to do it. Now, it says the employer sets a default contribution rate for the employees participating in the auto-enrollment 401k plan. The employee can, however, choose to contribute a different rate for a common type of plan known as a qualified automatic contribution arrangement. The employee's default contribution rate starts at about 3%, and her annual pay and graduate increases to 6% with each year as long as this employee stays in the plan. Now, the nice thing about that is it kind of puts it on autopilot. You don't have to think about it, you guys. It's automatically enrolling you into the plan. The SECURE Act pushes the 10% cap on QACA, which is the Qualified Automatic Contribution Arrangement, automatic contributions up to 15%, except for a worker's first year of participation. By delaying the increase until the second year of participation, lawmakers hope to avoid having large numbers of employees that will opt out. So basically, it's going to increase, but it's going to increase it at a slower rate, which I think is a good thing. Uh, That way, as you get raises, it goes up and you don't even have to think about it. Help for small businesses offering retirement plans. Okay, so you know that a lot of small businesses can't afford to run big, expensive 401k plans. It's simply harder for harder to save for retirement if your employer doesn't offer a retirement savings plan because all the work falls to you. That's why Secure Act has three provisions designed to help more small businesses offer retirement plans for their employee. First, the new law increases the tax credit for 50% of small business retirement plans to start startup costs. Uh, before, it was only $5,000. Second, the brand new $500 tax credit is created for small businesses to start up new 401k plans or simple IRA plans for their employees that include automatic enrollment. Third, the SECURE Act makes it easier for small businesses to join together to provide retirement plans for their employees. Starting in 21, 2021, the new law allows completely unrelated employers to participate in a multiple employer plan. So kind of pooling a few companies together to make the cost a little bit more manageable for the owners of the companies. Okay. Grad students and care providers can save more. Contributions to requirement to retirement accounts generally can't exceed the amount of your compensation. So if you receive no compensation, you generally can't make retirement fund contributions. Under the current law, graduate and postdoctoral students often receive stipends or similar payments that are, aren't treated as compensation and therefore can't be used for con- contributions to their plan. Uh, under the SECURE Act, amounts paid in the pursuit of graduate or postdoctoral study or research, such as fellowships, stipends, or other things, are treated as compensation and can be used to count towards earned income to make retirement, uh, to, to either put it into an IRA or to contribute towards a 401k. Okay, here's where some of the negatives go, and this is the part where people get really angry. Stretch IRAs are eliminated. Now, we're going to talk about these. A stretch IRA is basically means I haven't used all the money in my retirement, and I want to pass it on to my kids or my grandkids. So in the old days, you could stretch it out and they would not have to pay taxes as fast. So we're going to talk about it. Now for some bad news. The Secure Act eliminates the current rules that allow non-spouse IRA beneficiaries to stretch the required minimum contributions from an, entire, uh, an inherited account over their own lifetime and potentially allows the fund to grow tax-free for decades. Instead, all funds from an inherited IRA generally must now be distributed to non-spouse beneficiaries within 10 years of the IRA owner's death. So what that means basically is if I had $500,000 left in a traditional IRA and I died and my wife died and it went to my son, he would have 10 years of RMDs. He would have to liquidate that account within 10 years. In the old plan, he could have that stretch for his lifetime 
and the RMDs would be smaller. Now it's uh, it's 10 years. The rule also applies to funds in a 401k account or other defined contribution plan. So there are some exceptions to the general rule, though. Distributions over the life or life expectancy of a non-spouse beneficiary are allowed if the beneficiary is a minor, disabled, or chronically ill, or not more than 10 years younger than the deceased IRA owner. For minors, the exception only applies until the child reaches the age of majority. At that point, the 10-year rule kicks in. So, let's say that my child was 10 when he when I died and I left him that IRA. So, for the first 8 years until he became a until he became a of age of majority, he wouldn't have to worry about that 10-year rule, but once he turned 18, he's got 10 years to liquidate it. If the beneficiary is the IRA, the IRA owner's spouse, RMDs are still delayed until the end of the year that the deceased IRA owner would have reached 72. So <clears throat> if I die and it goes to my wife, then she has the RMDs just like she would have if it was her own. Okay, so that's good. There are plenty of potential drawbacks to borrowing from retirement funds. But loans from 401k plans are nevertheless allowed. Generally, you can borrow as much as 50% of your 401k balance up to $50,000. But remember, most loans should be repaid within have to be repaid within five years. Although more time is sometimes given if the borrowed money is used to buy a home. Okay, the new law flatly prohibits 401k loans provided through a credit card, debit card, or similar arrangement. I didn't even know that was a thing. This change, which takes effect immediately, is designed to prevent easy access to retirement funds to pay for routine or small purchases over time that could result in a total loan balance an account holder couldn't replay. Okay, you guys, first of all, don't take a loan from your 401k. It's for your retirement. You know, start a taxable account if you need money. Uh, Save it in a savings account. That was 10 different things we talked about on the SECURE Act. What do you guys think about it? Do you think it's a good thing? Do you think it's a bad thing? Biggest things, A, right? It's going to make more, well, three big things. It's going to let more small businesses uh, have access and hopefully find ways to uh, allow their employees to have access to a 401k or a simple IRA or whatever. Uh, Give them an option to save for their retirement. Uh, the biggest thing it does is it raises that required minimum distribution age from age 70 and a half, which it's been for uh, coming up on 50 years now, to age 72. But remember, that does make that initial RMD and the growing RMDs grow faster because the timeline's constricted. Uh, I have not seen a schedule. If I find one, I will insert it in the video uh, as soon as I find it. Uh, the third thing it does is, as we said, it eliminates the stretch IRA. So with knowing that, uh, it may be another reason why we want to spend down those traditional assets and save the Roth for our, uh, for our heirs. The other thing it does is if we take some of that money out of the, that we can either do Roth conversions or... Or if we take more money than we need, we can take that money and invest it taxable. And as we know, if we pass a taxable account on to our heirs, they get a step up in basis. And we're not going to get into that too far. But basically, it means that if I bought, let's say, Apple stock at $100, and it, when I die, it's worth $300. When I pass that on to my heirs, being my son, it would be, he would get it at the value it was when I died. So he would get capital gains from $300 and however much it appreciated until he sold it. So there are ways tax planning uh, is going to, the Secure Act is definitely going to change how we do our tax planning. Anyway, you guys, I hope you got something out of this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel and you haven't already subscribed, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell. You'll get notified every time I make a new video. I try to make a couple a week. Uh, I've been down with a sickness for a couple days. I hope my voice doesn't sound terrible.